As we look back on the last year and a half that the division has been in existence, it has gone through seven major content releases, and with Update 1.8 set to launch somewhere in mid-December, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at the past seven updates and touch on the highs and lows of each content release. Each update brought new content and meta changes, and although they were not all met with universal praise from the community, they have all contributed in some way, shape, or form to where we are now. So, without further delay, let's jump right into episode 3 of this series and take a quick look back at update 1.3. What's going on, agents? It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and in today's Division video, I decided to take a trip into the past of my beloved Tom Clancy title and touch on some of the changes that Update 1.3 brought to the live game. This is Episode 3 of the series, and in case you missed Episode 1 or 2, where I reviewed Update 1.1 and 1.2, I will leave a link to those videos in the video description below. Update 1.3, also known as Underground, was the first content update to feature the staggered release dates in that Xbox and PC owners received it on June 28th, while PlayStation owners had to wait until August 2nd. Underground brought a new, close quarters combat element to the division, which featured procedurally generated maps through the sewers and subway system under Manhattan, and this could be played solo or co-op. Directives made their debut in this update and allowed players to customize and increase the difficulty of their chosen mission in the Underground, as well as the option for one, two, or three phase missions. A new XP system was installed that allowed an agent to track their progress from Underground rank 0 up to a maximum rank of 40. Certain milestones were attached to this rank, including vanity items and more difficult directives being unlocked. The game's third incursion, Dragon's Nest, was introduced in this update and featured the Cleaner faction and was the most elaborate incursion to date. Dragon's Nest put a premium on fire resistance to say the least, and gave agents their first glimpse of the four horsemen and the fire truck converted into a flamethrower in the final encounter. Five new gear sets were unveiled in update 1.3, including Alpha Bridge, Blind, Deadeye, Firecrest, and Reclaimer, and these gear sets gave agents offerings that could support them in longer underground missions where there was a premium placed on crowd control and squad support. Much like the four gear sets given to agents in update 1.1, the gear awarded to agents in this update are some of the strongest and most popular to date. For those of you agents unfamiliar with the Blind gear set, it was reworked and renamed to the more familiar title of Banshee and Update 1.4. In addition, the Blind System MDR rifle was coded into the game in Update 1.3, but would not yet be available for agents to acquire until Update 1.5. A new assortment of weapons was added to our arsenals in this update, including the G36 assault rifle, SVD marksman rifle, PP-19 submachine gun, and X-45 pistol. In addition, the Showstopper AA-12 full auto shotgun, which was coded into the game in update 1.2, could now be acquired by agents. Both Hudson Refugee Camp and Queens Tunnel Camp missions received an option to select Challenge Difficulty, and Falcon Lost, Clear Sky, and Dragon's Nest Incursions received the hardest difficulty to date, Heroic Mode, in this update. A major change to the base of operations was installed in the terminal, and this was a shared social space in a newly unlocked portion in the rear of the base, next to the reward claim vendor. In the terminal, agents could interact with the HVT contractor and all new vendors including the special equipment vendor and blueprint vendor as well as having the ability to fast travel directly into the terminal instead of landing in front of the base of operations and then being required to walk slowly through the front entrance. Weapon recalibration was introduced and allowed an agent to roll one talent per weapon at the recalibration bench. 
Recalibrating a weapon talent required weapon kits and phoenix credits, of which the latter could be acquired through drops in the game or crafted. Many gameplay changes were added in Update 1.3, including a new Dark Zone bracket for 231 plus gear score, an increase to a player stash up to a total of 70 slots, and the normalizing of NPCs to match an agent's level. So if you were level 30, you would only encounter level 30 or higher NPCs while in free roam. NPC weak points were rebalanced, and this was so that the amount of damage to trigger and the amount of damage it does when triggered were consistent across the board. A reduction of necessary Phoenix credits for 204 high end and 240 gear set items and blueprints was installed in this update. The special equipment vendor would now only sell weapons, with a newly created blueprint vendor in the terminal handling that portion of the agent's needs. NPC threat proximity areas were increased and caused a player to stay in a combat situation for longer, and required an agent to travel further away from the combat zone before standing down and being able to fast travel. A no-kick mechanic was installed that prevented a squad mate from being booted from the party while in a boss fight or up to one minute after it had been completed. Several changes were made to Clear Sky that prevented the final encounter from starting until all players were within the final circle, and exotic damage resilience was capped at 90%. Update 1.3 also brought many changes to the differing weapon archetypes and that it added unique bonuses to several weapon families. LMGs received increased damage to targets out of cover percentages, shotguns added a chance to stagger NPCs, and assault rifles were awarded enemy armor damage bonuses. SMG bonuses were changed from crit hit chance to crit hit damage, and weapon base damage was increased for shotguns, while the AUG and Vector both received a base damage decrease. The M1A, which had long been a favorite of agents, received a change to its accuracy to increase the bloom when rapid firing, and both explosive bullets and incendiary bullets received reductions in their damage output. Gear and gear sets received numerous changes in this update, and that this was the first time that gear would now have mod slots, and this change would only affect gear that dropped after update 1.3. Two mod slots were added to the chest, one for the mask, one for the knee pads, and one for the backpack. Holsters were modified to now have all three attributes of firearms, stamina, and electronics, and major changes were implemented for both the Sentry's Call and Striker's Battle Gear sets. Prior to this update, both of these sets were capped at a four-piece bonus, but once update 1.3 went live, these sets had their two- and three-piece bonuses modified while gaining a five-piece bonus. The five-piece bonuses did not add any more power to these gear sets, but were an attempt to steer agents to invest more into these two powerful gear sets in order to get the same bonuses as they already had with the two-, three-, and four-piece bonuses. The Dark Zone was not exempt from the sweeping changes and received yet another gear score bracket, with the 231 plus bracket being added and new strengths of NPCs roaming in certain zones. DZ1 and 2 would now feature level 33 NPCs, DZ3 and 4 level 34 NPCs, and DZ5 and 6 would showcase the hardest NPCs in the game, with level 35s roaming these two zones. DZ5 and 6 in gear score bracket 201 through 230 would now have a chance to drop gear score 229 high ends and 268 gear set pieces and Dark Zone Chest would now scale better with the gear score bracket and the number zone you were in. Loot changes were made to HVT missions and that they had their rewards and difficulty adjusted to take into account the gear score increases. In addition, loot drops in challenge mode missions and normal mode missions were modified, as was division tech, and that green DT would no longer drop in the dark zone after level 30. 
A massive bug fix list was unveiled for update 1.3 that included tweaks to 47 different items with a further 8 installed as PC specific. Now I don't have enough time in this video to cover all of the bug fixes installed in this update, but some of these were quite a hot topic back in June 2016 when this update was unveiled. Some of my personal favorites were when using Combat Medic, the players using it would receive a heal for 40% more health instead of just their allies. VOIP chat was found to be causing lag and freezes in the dark zone. Players could use the ballistic shield to break the collision with the dark zone checkpoint doors and enter the checkpoints while rogue. NPCs could shoot through walls in HVT missions. Sometimes reloading wouldn't take into consideration extended magazines. And they fixed the bug where the moon was upside down. As an agent that experienced every minute of update 1.3, all I can say is what the f***? <laughs> Throughout the first two updates, we had been progressing to higher and higher levels of gear that had scaled in direct proportions to that of the endgame NPCs. However, when update 1.3 dropped, we quickly found out just how overmatched we were versus the highest level NPCs in the game. Now not only were they able to withstand huge amounts of damage from fully geared up squads of agents, we had to quickly readjust to just how much damage they could inflict on us. It was like we were being sent into battle with weapons that fired cotton balls and wearing paper as armor versus NPCs with hard hitting weaponry and the latest in ballistic body armor. Now I am all for increased difficulty levels, but the jump from 1.2 to 1.3 was truly dramatic. And I remember many of my friends actually quitting the game over the crazy hitting bullet sponge NPCs. There was nothing new about their battlefield tactics. They didn't have new routes or enhanced AI. They were simply armed to the teeth and sporting millions upon millions of health points. Underground was fairly interesting, but it lacked immersion or true variety. There was no storyline enhancements, no new AI or battle techniques to learn about or adjust to. It was the same AI we were used to, just in a new environment. Directives and phases did add a new element of customization, and I don't want you to think that Underground was a failure, because it wasn't. Just for me, it wasn't something that I really enjoyed coming back to. The Dragon's Nest incursion was the best incursion to date, with multiple encounters, and even though the final battle versus the fire truck wasn't overly complicated, it was something new and that made it interesting. I can remember farming the four horsemen for hours upon hours, looking for those coveted gear set drops to complete sets or upgrade our overall gear scores. The five gear sets introduced in update 1.3 were not initially accepted by the player base, as Blind and Deadeye are quite different now than they were back then. Reclaimer was initially bugged out and not working properly, and Alpha Bridge wasn't something that many players understood how to use. That would come in update 1.5. Firecrest was a gear set that I couldn't seem to loot the correct amount of gear pieces to use properly, and like Alpha Bridge, it would take a little bit of time for the player base to find out how to properly use this gear set. The G36 assault rifle and X45 pistols were truly overpowering in comparison to other weaponry in the game, and the player base quickly gravitated to these weapons, and I can remember rocking a Ballistic Shield X45 Sentry's Call gear set that was all about marking targets and downing them quickly. And finally, I remember how nice it was to see other players in the shared social space of the newly installed terminal that compressed all of our needs into an easy to find format. Having the HVT contractor, special equipment vendor and blueprint vendor all in close proximity was a truly smart design decision. This is going to wrap up episode 3 of this quick look back on the history of the division's updates and I would love to hear your thoughts on this look into the past. If you could take the time to rate the video with a huge thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. 
If you want some more of my division content in your lives, please take the time to hit that sub button and follow me on Twitter. Until my next division video, this has been Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer saying peace out.